Oh, everything you're about to see is available within the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Hey! <laughs> a couple of the new modifiers found within Fusion within DaVinci Resolve 17 will enable you to really quickly and easily start creating your own transitions. You'll be able to do so without adding any manual keyframes, you won't need to do any curves or splines, and these transitions will be totally scalable so you can make them as long or as short as you like, and last but not least, they will work on any frame rate. How awesome does all of that sound? Unfortunately, it's actually quite easy to do once you get your head around it. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to those modifiers as well as taking you through the entire process. Of course, if you've got DaVinci Resolve 17, you can follow along, but you will need at least a beginner level of Fusion knowledge to do so. In the future, I will do some more specific, shorter tutorials to show you how to create your own transitions. So with all that out of the way, my name's Alex, this is Mr. Alex Tech, let's open DaVinci Resolve and take a look. So first up, we're going to make some seamless whip style transitions. So I'm in DaVinci Resolve, I'm on the Edit tab. I'm going to grab some clips, just put them on my timeline. I'm going to make sure we've got some overlap because we need the handles when making transitions. So let's just bring that in. And then we're going to open up the effects library. We're going to expand the toolbox, go to video transitions, and you can grab any of the transitions in here. Doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to go with additive dissolve because it's at the top. And we're going to put that on a little cut like so. Then we're going to right click on the transition and we're going to convert to a fusion cross dissolve. And that will just change that transition to a standard cross dissolve. We can then right click on that cross dissolve and we can open in the fusion page. And then fusion will open like so. So these transitions work as follows. You've got your media out, which is obviously just the end result. Media in one is the first clip, so the clip on the left on the timeline. Media in two is the second clip, so the clip on the right on the timeline. And then all this is doing is using a cross dissolve to dissolve those together, like so, giving you your simple cross dissolve transition. Now, if you want to have a look what's in this little folder, you just double click and you can expand it and we can see we've just got a dissolve node in here. Or we can right click and we can ungroup and then we just end up with the dissolve node itself. If we click on dissolve, open up the inspector in the top right hand corner, you can see here you've got your background foreground slider. Now that just works by if it's over on the far left, you get just the background, i.e. just the first clip. And then if we go all the way to the right, it's on one, which means we just get the foreground, not the background, and anything in between is a blend of the two. Nice and simple. Now what we're gonna do is just delete the dissolve because we don't actually want that. And then we're gonna start working on creating a seamless transition. And now with these new tools within DaVinci Resolve Fusion, it's way easier, way quicker, and way more reliable. So what we're gonna do first of all, is just come on this little shortcut bar here. We're gonna grab transform, and we're just gonna drop it on this line, like so. So a transform tool obviously just allows you to move things around the screen. What we want to happen is for this clip to move over to the right hand side and then we get the other clip to start off on the left, move over at the same speed, essentially replacing it, giving us that wipe transition. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna right click where it says center on the inspector. I'm gonna to come to modify with, and then I'm gonna come down to this one here, which is called vector result. This is a new one within DaVinci Resolve 17. With that clicked, you get the keyframe over here that's gone red, and now we can click on modifiers up here. Now this vector result is quite clever. So we've got the origin and we've got X and Y. So all that means is the starting point essentially for this transition. So 0.5, 0.5 means it's directly in the middle. If we move the X over, we can start from the left, we can start from the right, whichever we want. Distance is how much it moves from that origin. So it's at naught at the moment. If we drag that up, you can see it's moving over to the right. And one means it's moved one. So it's gone from 0.5 to 1.5 on the X axis. And if we drag it the other way, it moves back. So that's how we can use that to do our little whip transitions. If you wanted to do an up or down transition, you just change this angle here. So if I was to change this angle to 90 and then just move the distance, you can see it now goes up or down. Really simple, right? So how do we make it so it animates all the way across? Well, again, we do that using another brand new tool. So I'm gonna to right click where it says distance. We're gonna go modify with, 
and at the top we've got this one called anim curves or animation curves. And now we've linked that distance to the animation curve. Now the animation curve really simply will go from zero to one over the duration of the entire transition. So if I hit play now, all it's going to do, if we look at the distance here, it's going to go from zero to one. And it'll always go from zero to one, regardless of how long or short the transition is. So we don't have to keyframe it. We don't have to set up any keyframe stretches. It'll always go from zero to one, like so. Now within this animation curves area, there's a load of controls we can use to make this look way, way better. So at the moment, you can see the curve here is linear, which means that it's just whipping over at a constant speed. We want some acceleration to make it look much better. So in this curve, use the little drop down and we can select easing. And then we've got in and out. We use those drop downs and we've got all of these standard curves. Now I've talked about these in the past before because I actually wrote a whole load of expressions to do exactly this, which is how I built my previous transitions. So I won't go into them now, but I can spend some more time on them in a different video if you want to. There is a link in the description to a website which gives you a demonstration of how these different curves look. So feel free to go and have a little look at that. And we can just pick some. So if I'm gonna pick Expo, because I like Expo, I've messed with that in the past. It's exponential, so basically it's gonna start off slow, get really quick in the middle, and then slow down at the end. I'm gonna change both of them to Expo. And now if we hit play, you can see it starts off slow, speeds up in the middle, and then slows down at the end. It's still just going from zero to one, but it's accelerating in the middle and going way faster but immediately it looks much, much better. And now we've got this real simple whip over to the right hand side. Now, while we're in here, we've got some more controls for the animation curves. We've got scaling and we've got timing. So at the moment it's going from zero to one. If I change the scaling from one to 0.5, so half of what it was originally, you'll see now, rather than going from zero to one, it'll go from zero to 0.5. So you have some granular control over the length or how much this transition is going to move, which means in the future we'll be able to do loads of really clever stuff, which we'll come to in another video. I'm going to leave that as one at the moment. So it whips over like that. Perfect. So now we're just going to copy this transform node. We'll paste it up here. We'll connect media two to that one. We're going to need a merge node. So I'm going to just grab a merge node down here and then we'll drag transform to that one. We're seeing the wrong clip at the moment. I need to see the other clip. And that's because this transform has been attached to our foreground. We need it on the background. So we're just gonna right click on merge, change that to swap inputs. And there we go. Now at the moment, they're both doing the same thing, which is not what we want. So we're gonna click on this transform, the one that's connected to media two. We're gonna open up the modifiers. We're gonna come down to the vector. And all we need this to do, rather than starting at the middle, rather than starting at 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and moving across the right, we just need to start at minus 0 0.5 on the x-axis, which means, I don't know if you can see, it's now starting over here on the left. And then as the transition goes through, it's going to come in from the left-hand side, just replacing the previous one, giving us a real simple whip transition. Ignore these empty bits, top and bottom, I've used a wrong clip here for this demo, but that mine will stick with it. So as you can see, we've made really simply a quick whip to the right transition. I'm going to jump back into the edit tab. If I lengthen this out, because we've used those new tools, it will automatically scale to the length that I've dragged it to. That also means it will work on any frame rate, which is really cool. Now, if we were happy with this, all we could do is right click Create a transition preset, give it a name. I'm going to call this quick whip right. Click on OK. In my video transitions here, we'll scroll down until we've got the user area. Ignore all of my ones that are currently in there. And then here we've got quick whip right. We can now preview it. And then whenever we want to use it, we can just drag it from there and it's ready to go. So really quickly and easily, we've made this whip right transition that's scalable and work on any resolution and now sits within our video transitions. We've done no keyframing, we've done nothing fancy, we've just used the existing tools, which is really, really cool. 
So I'm going to right click on this one now and go back into the Fusion page. And here we are. So we've done a whip right. Let's say we want to make a whip left. Well, again, that's really quite simple. I'm going to go into my Media 1 Transform. We're going to go to the Modifiers. And in the scale, it's 1. Now this can go to minus numbers. So if we wanted it to whip to the left, we could just do minus 1. Now if we have a look, rather than whipping to the right, it's whipping to the left. So cool, we're halfway there. We just need to go to our other transform for our second clip. We need to do the same thing, minus one on the scale. But because this one starts over here, you can see it's whipping to the left. It's actually going further off screen, which is not what we want. So we want this clip to start over on this side of the screen instead. So we're going to go back to our vector result. Rather than being minus 0.5 in the X, we're going to change that to be 1.5 which means it's going to start over here on the right. All of our ins and out curves are already done. So if we hit play, we've got a real simple whip left transition now. Cool. And then of course you could save this as a transition preset like we did previously. And then you've got a whip right and a whip left. So you can build these up really quickly. Obviously the thing that's missing from this though is our motion blur. So we need to add some motion blur to really make this one look a little bit better. Now there's loads of different ways to add motion blur. I'm going to show you how to use the directional blur node because I can also then introduce a new tool for you to use. So it's really useful. So I'm going to open up my effects library. I'm going to go to open effects. I'm going to go to resolve FX blur and I'm going to grab the directional blur. I'm going to add this after the merge node down here. Now I seem to have a bug with my fusion. If I click and drag, it won't actually let me release in the nodes for some reason. What I need to do is click on it. It adds it down here to my little workspace and then I can just hold shift and my mouse, drag it, release and put it where I want it. So there you go. That's interesting. Anyway, I'm going to click on my directional blur now that it's attached. And as you can see, we've just got a 45 degree angle blur currently. So the first thing we need to do, change the blur angle to where we want it. We want it at zero because we want it to be a horizontal blur. And then we've got the blur strength. So the blur strength, it just increases the blur strength, as you'd expect. In zero, we've got no blur. All the way to, the, to one, we've got loads of blur. So we're gonna use our curves again here. I'm gonna right click on blur strength. I'm gonna modify with, and then anim curves once again. With that done, we're gonna click on modifiers. So at the moment, what's happening? At the beginning, it's starting off with zero blur. The blur is steadily increasing all the way through to one until it gets to the end which is not what we want. We want it to reach one when it's in the middle and then make its way down back to zero when we get to the end. So all we need to do is click on this button here that says mirror. And now it will do just that. It'll start off at zero, ramp up to one in the middle and then back down to zero at the end. So now we've got this transition. Now that motion blur is looking a bit strong so we need to dial that down and we want to add some curves to it as well. So it's not quite so linear. So first things first, still within the modifiers, I'm going to change curve to easing and change my in and out. Let's choose a different one this time. Let's just go with quad and see how it looks. No, I don't like that one. So let's go with, let's try quint. It's going to take a little bit of experimenting to get used to all these. Let's just stick with that for the time being. Now, obviously the level of directional zoom is too strong. It's too strong at this point. Now, what we can do again is use this scaling. So I'm going to go to the middle of this transition. So the point where the directional zoom will be at its strongest, which is here. And I'm just going to bring this scale down until I'm happy with it. About, I'm going to go with that. So I've ended up being on 0.413. So now, rather than going from zero to one back down to zero, it's going to go from zero to 413 and then back down to zero again. So we can just control the level of the blur and that looks much more like it. So again, let's jump back into the edit tab. Let's shorten this and we'll hit play. And now we've got a real cool whip transition with motion blur that's completely scalable and will work on any frame rate and of course any resolution as well. 
So these new tools are super clever and they're gonna be really useful for creating your own transitions. There's loads more that you can actually do with this. So I'm gonna show you one more while we're here. It's gonna be a long video, but there we go. So I'm gonna just start completely from fresh. I'll grab an additive resolve. It doesn't have to be that one, it can be anyone as I say. We'll right click, we'll convert to a fusion. We'll right click again and we're gonna open in fusion. This one, I'm gonna leave the cross dissolve as it is because this issue is just a real simple blur between the two. We're gonna grab a transform node and put it at the end there. And what I want to do is do a real quick zoom in and then zoom out transition. So with the transform node selected in the inspector, we're gonna come down to size this time because we want to increase the size and then decrease the size. So same again, we're gonna right click, modify with animation curves. Now what's interesting about side, because I've linked size to the animation curves, rather than it going from zero to one, it's actually already scaled it, because you can see the size goes from zero to five. I don't know why, I assume that was intentional, but that's what it does, it goes from zero to five. So we need to amend that. So we're gonna click on our modifiers. You can see here now the scale is at five. I'm gonna change that back to one. And what's happening here is it's starting at zero, it's finishing at one, which is not really what we want. So first things first, we're gonna tick mirror because we want it to zoom in and then zoom out again. And let's have a look this time. So we're starting off at zero, we're going to one and then we're going back down to zero. So we don't want it to start at zero because if we start at zero, we can't see anything because zero size means you can't see anything. Fortunately, under the scaling, there's this other option called offset. But what that means is you can offset the beginning. So rather than starting at zero, go to one, we can have it start at one and go through to two. So the scaling's the same. We're still going through one. We're just adding one, but we're starting off from a different point. So I'm gonna make this offset one. So now we're gonna start off at one. So you can see it's filling the screen. It's gonna zoom in to two, and then it's gonna come back out again to one at the end. So now I've got this real quick little zoom in. That's linear, so we want to change the curves. So let's change that to easing, and we'll change that to, let's just go with Expo again, because I know what to expect from that one. And now we've got this real quick whip, inwards and outwards. Now I want that cross dissolve to be a bit quicker, so let's just modify that. We'll open up cross dissolve, we'll go to the dissolve. This one should already have the animation curves attached because that's used by default. So we're gonna to go to modifiers, it's linear. We'll change that to easing, We'll change it to Expo as well. Let's see if this looks any better. That's starting to look a little bit better. It whips in, dissolves, and then whips back out again. Now again, what we'd really like to do for that, just to really sell the effect, is to hide that transition just a little bit more with some blur. So again, effects library, open effects. I'm gonna grab the resolve FX blur. I want to go to zoom blur this time. We're gonna add that down there. So I've got zoom blur. Zoom blur does exactly what it says on the tin. It's got this zoom style blur. If we give that a click in the inspector, we've got the position of it and then we've got the zoom amount. It's the zoom amount we want to modify. So I'm gonna right click, modify with animation curves. By default, it's gonna start off at zero and go through to one. Not what we want, so we're gonna to go to modifiers. First things first, we'll tick mirror. So now it'll start off at zero, go to one, and then go back out again. So if we hit play, how's that look? Not too bad. Let's change the curve to something else. Let's just go with that one. And there you go. Now we've got this zoom in out transition with a dissolve and with the zoom blur. So that's working really well. Again, no keyframes, no splining, it's got curves. The transition will work regardless of the length. We can save that as a preset and job done. So hopefully from this video, you could really see the potential of some of these new tools available to us to create transitions and titles and loads of other stuff within the Fusion tab. How cool is all of that? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or feedback, make sure to leave them down below. And if you're new here, you enjoyed this video, you wanna see some other DaVinci Resolve stuff, some techie stuff and everything else in between, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks ever so much for watching folks. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.
Marsella.